Hi everyone, this is the Plant Propagator and welcome back to my channel. What I want to go over today is deflasking of orchids and this is the flask that I have uh, right here. Um, and this actually is, uh, these are dendrobium orchids that uh, I germinated these from seed not quite a year and a half ago and these plants have been in this flask for, uh, for quite a while. Um, to start out, dendrobiums, I don't grow uh, dendrobiums very much. They tend to do really well in, uh, in southwest Florida. Uh, you can either plate them in, put them in pots, or I actually mount them in the date palm trees in front of my house here. And they, uh, the roots grab on and they tend to do uh, really very well here. Um, I've started doing some real simple crosses with dendrobiums and you get typical seed capsules. I don't have any dendrobium capsules to show you, seed capsules to show you right now, uh, but I do have uh, a few seed capsules from the Cattleya orchids also mounted on my uh, date palm trees in the, in the front of my house. Uh, but today what I want to go over with you is uh, propagate or is deflasking of the the date palms or I'm sorry <laughs> deflasking of these dendrobium orchids uh, from this flask right here and like I said these have been in here for uh, a little bit over a year they normally I like to pull them out sooner than this uh, but then these were just some leftover ones uh, that I have but what I want to do is go over this with you what you need to know is these things have always been in this flask and in this flask there's a very uh, nutrient rich medium here the black is from activated charcoal but it has minerals nutrients vitamins it's everything that the plant uh, needs uh, and it's also the thing that's the most important and it's very high humidity so it is close to 100% uh, humidity in here you can see some condensation on the uh, the side of the flask right here uh, and you have to because they've been under these very controlled conditions you have to treat them very carefully when you deflask so we're going to take them out of the flasks and also place them under very high humidity conditions and then gradually expose them to ambient humidity uh, in this environment. So first of all, uh, and, and that's, that's again the most important things, is, is these are delicate plants and we have to treat them, uh, initially we have to treat them like that. All right, so let me take these things out. We'll see what we have. I'm not sure, I don't remember exactly uh, how many are in here and how I did this, but let's take these things out. Uh, these are wrapped with, uh, with wrap, so I've got to pull the wrap off, and it's just to kind of ensure contamination. I also should say that, and I'll go over this later, that these plants are in an, an aseptic or sterile uh, environment. So this is what we have. We take a look at this, and I'm going to see if I can gently reach in there and pull these guys out. First thing to come out right here is a root, so these things got a really got really nice root system. And then I'm just going to kind of carefully work this guy out, and it's okay. And what you can see is the charcoal medium is just kind of falling off of the roots, and you kind of want to get. Looks like we got most of it off, but there's there's a lot of roots in here. That's a that's that's nice roots right there, and that's what you want when you pull these orchids out of culture. You want you want healthy plants. You want nice root system, and I'm talking to you, but I'm really um, and showing you the roots, but I'm really aware that I got to put these roots under these uh, under very um, you know they're delicate, so they're going to dry out as wet as it is here. So what I'm going to do is wash these roots off just a little bit more, get all of the old uh, medium off, and it's easy to see here because it's, uh, it's all the black stuff that is, um, that's uh, dissipating into the medium. And then I'm going to gently tease these guys apart, which isn't hard to do. I rinse each plantlet off pretty carefully um, because what you want to what you want to make sure of is that the medium is rinsed off of the roots. The medium is it's a very like I said it's a very rich uh, medium minerals and nutrients. And one of the concerns that you have actually the major concern that you have here is from bacterial and fungal contamination. So the uh, any kind of um, 
fungi, any kind of uh, rot that will grow, will actually grow on the medium first, on the roots, and not, uh, and then that'll that'll kind of uh, invade the roots and take over the uh, the plant. And you you again want to avoid that. So what I'm trying to do is just rinse these rinse the plants off and this is a this is kind of an example of what kind of plant you're going to be looking for um, this plant is uh, you know it's a nice looking plant it has you know nice nice roots and uh, shoot and, and we got we got a lot of plants here I tell you there are a lot of plants and I don't have time to go over uh, to plant each one, but I can show you in general uh, what's what's involved. So what you have to do in order to plant these things is I like planting them in uh, Orchiata um, bark, and this is pretty fine Orchiata bark. I like to make sure I like to soak this in water and let it let the the bark absorb a lot of the water. And then after about uh, five or ten minutes, I pour the water off. So what you end up with is a really um, kind of a moistened bark uh, formula, bark mix here. And then it's a simply a question of moving the bark away and then placing it over the roots. Uh, the roots from the dendrobiums are a lot uh, finer than what you normally get with um, with the the cattleyas and a lot of other orchids. So you, you can get a finer mix. Here's, I've got so many plants, I'm not sure I want to plant this guy, so we'll keep him out of the way. He didn't have a very good uh, root system. So going in here, and this is this is all there is to it. Uh, you plant, you, you can leave the roots exposed a little bit, but in general you, you kind of keep things Look at this mat. Look at this big boy. This is probably the one that was root that was sticking out the top of the container. And we're going to do our best to actually we're not going to be able to bury that root. Uh, but we're going to do our best to you know to bury the roots. And but you don't have to you don't have to be real careful. What I'm trying not to do is put these bury these uh, you know bury these too deep. Again, the orchid roots it's okay if they're out uh, just a little bit. And um, this is this is generally how it goes. Okay, so we are almost done. I got just a couple more plants that I want to plant here. And again, I'm just trying to get these in here and positioned as good as possible. No need to bury the plant. Look at this. Look at these guys. They look pretty good. All right. So this is it. So we've got all of our plants planted in here. <laughs> not, not so. Not really well, but it's okay. We'll see how it goes. Um, and what we have to, again, what you have to be aware of is the really, the high humidity that we have to keep these, uh, these plants under those conditions. So in order to do that, I should also say that these containers that I like to use, these are just uh, Walmart salad containers, but you can use any kind of container. You can use a pot and cover it with a, with a paper bag, but what I like to use is these, this is a nice size, um, like I said, salad container. And at the end of this, what you do is you simply cover this with another salad container. And in order to keep this on, I use my rubber bands. All right, so put the rubber bands on the containers. And I'm gonna, if I can do this, I'm going to put two rubber bands on this container, but I do that, I try to do that on each container. Alright, so just like so. Okay, I think I won. Yay. Alright, so on this container, uh, this is what you generally need to do. And they'll, they'll store like this 
for about uh, a month, maybe a little bit over a month, but you just kind of watch it and see what's going on. I should also say when you have this container like this, there's certainly, it's an enclosed environment and there's no need to water. Even if there's a little small leak, you don't need to do anything with this. Oh, I should also say, make sure to label your container with uh, when, you, when you did this. If you have a lot of containers, it kind of helps to keep things, uh, things separate. Um, this is another container that I did about a month and a half ago. And these are ready to be exposed slowly to ambient humidity. And the way to do this is to gradually remove this cover. These are also, like I said, dendrobiums. And what you, have, what you do on this is gradually expose the orchids like this. So you do this for about a week, then you roll back the top a little bit more for another week, uh, and then eventually what you do is you end up uh, just kind of exposing in week long, week every every week expose it a little bit more here, here, there, and then eventually you can expose them to just the ambient humidity and let these guys uh, grow out. So right now these are a little smaller. Um, but then the ones that we did before, the ones that we left in culture for, for a long time, they tended to they tend to do really well. And I also wanted to show you uh, some plants that are from the same cross, from the same dendrobium cross. And I potted these up maybe around six months ago. Uh, they were kept in the flask a little bit longer, so they grew <laughs> grew pretty well. Uh, and I took them out at the right time. They have since acclimated and are growing very, very nicely. They have uh, long shoots and pretty nice root systems that have, uh, have developed. So then they are fully acclimated. So it's time to uh, place these guys in the tree or out with the rest of my orchids. Uh, I wish you success if you deflask any of your orchids. That's all I have for today. Happy propagating.